fine today? Okay. All right. So I welcome you all here to this, uh, and I give all glory to God speaking today and welcome you to this place of love and acceptance. So five months from now, we'll be singing lots of Christmas carols, including Joy to the World, which sometimes seems a little strange because we're not experiencing a whole lot of joy necessarily at that time. Stress that we go through with buying presents and planning family events and getting caught up in the stress of the world. And maybe it's not till Christmas morning when we're feeling excited and we're opening presents and we're with family or whatever, we might feel some joy. And then after that day, the stress starts back up again about life, right? We get caught up into it. So it seems kind of weird to experience all that stress when we're supposed to be living in joy. So Spirit and I thought today we'd talk about joy to the world now and get you all ready for five months from now, okay? What? Prime the pump. There we go. Time to get joyful, you all. So Jane Goodell says, live in joy, even though you have all the facts. Archangel Zedekiel said through a channeling session, if it does not bring you joy, then why are you doing it? That's a good question. Why do we not do things that bring us joy? Why do we keep staying involved in things that aren't joyful, whether it's our work or other stuff that's going on? So the question is, what would God say about joy? So this is what Spirit said through me. Joy begets joy. It makes itself over and over. So therefore, you want joy to be the theme of your life. Anybody out there like to have that as a theme for their life? Okay. Maybe you could make it your byline. Let joy be your byline. Put it on your computer, on the screen. Let it be your password. And the password could be in your own life where you allow people to get into you through the joy that you're experiencing. So it's time to let joy be your entry into heaven, which we all know is here, not out there. Know that there is joy in entertainment, in happiness, in laughter. But as I say that, we want to know that joy is not just merely entertainment, it's so much more. It's an entry into us, into our life. It's not an exit, but it's an entry to allow life around us to come into us. That's how we get ourselves into others and connect to that oneness that we are through the joy that we're experiencing. Now, joy does not have to be one of those things where you jump up and down and you're just really excited. That's one part of it. But it could be something that's really quiet, like at night reading a bedtime story to yourself. That could be joyful. It does not have to be a performance because all it is is oneness with God, beloveds. It's the great joy that you're connecting with source. Now, sometimes we think that God interferes in our life, gets in the way. Anybody have that thought? Causes interference or circumstances or obstructions. And then we throw our hands up and we go, oh God, why did you do that? Why did this happen to me? Or we want to blame God for it. But there's no need to do that, beloveds, because God isn't interfering in our life. Spirit makes it clear, our path open for us. Actually, what we need to do is release the fear, release the negative thoughts, and open up to the path that God's providing for us. But we are the ones that throw out our own stumbling blocks through our negative thoughts. We are the ones that, out of fear, create things that kind of get in our way. So maybe in our own life, we're experiencing a little bit of short-sightedness or far-sightedness, and we need to get some clarity in ourselves. Maybe we need spiritual glasses to see our truth better. And what is our truth, as we teach here? To see as God sees. That's how we want to see life and to see each other. Nonetheless, we need to keep, we need to keep going. And when it comes to life, we cannot predict accurately how it's going to end up. Has anybody been able to say, oh, I think next Thursday this is going to happen and have it happen? Not totally. <laughs> but we have a way of creating that by being aware of our unconscious thoughts, because those are the power ones that create our lives. And so we can look at the things that are going outside of us and go, oh, I remember now that's a reflection of what's going on inside. So what do I need to change inside so that I can predict and say, my life is going in this direction because I am one with God. We carry a lot of expectations around with us for our relationships, for work, for life. A friend of mine called it cherished outcomes. We're looking at the outcome that's happening to us. 
we just have to skip along on one foot and then another foot and another foot and take steps forward as we go and see what comes but always be aware of what we are feeling inside and maybe our life sometimes is like being a toddler when we learned how to walk sometimes we fell down and then we got up again and started walking again even as an adult on our spiritual path we can experience that that we we're going forward and going oh I want this but the fear comes up in the way and we take a step backwards and then we go oh wait a minute I need to go forward let me take another step so if we keep doing that and I'm here and my goal is there eventually I will get there as long as I stay awake I know that God is leading the path I open up to that path inside of myself and be aware of the joy because a joy can bring our closeness to God inside we can be joyful about taking those steps. We can even be joyful about the times that we fall back instead of beating ourselves up and finding fault with ourselves. Just, okay, it's all part of life. I know God is here. I'm going forward. When we feel that connection inside of our heart, and this is where we want to be, then we feel the safety inside. We feel the oneness of source, but it's also called peace. And we talk a lot about being a peacemaker here. Would you all like to experience peace inside? It's a choice. And it can come through the joy that you feel. When we talk about peace, we're not just talking about merely an end to arms, as some people think peace is. But it's more like settling in, a quietness inside, a calmness. Like a warm night in bed when there's a lot of frost outside. Does that give you peace and joy? Serenity? It can. God, we can look at God as our comforter. You know, like we put a comforter blanket over us when it's cold. We can look at God that way and say, oh, right now in my connection with God, I trust, I allow, and I feel more joy with my oneness with source. And when we feel that in the moment, then we feel God's love within us. Because we've let go of the blocks. We've let go of our expectations. We're just in the moment. And God comes to us and says, okay, friend, I have it. Come with me. Let me lead you along the path. I will take you where you want to be. Now, to follow that, we have to be able to trust and surrender, which can be a difficult thing sometimes to surrender. Oh, God, do I trust God's will? No, my mind says, I think I know the right way, but it doesn't. So you may not know the name of where you're going, what exactly is going to happen but that doesn't matter because you can know that God knows the way very well and you have something you can surrender to and trust and let go of because God says I am the way the path and the truth boy that's pretty powerful isn't it so I want to follow somebody who knows the way the path and the truth it means to trust in God and God will take us wherever we want to go that's important to know so, you've probably suspected for a time that there is happiness greater than you presently know. We only allow ourselves to feel so much happiness and joy. Sometimes our mind goes, oh, I can't feel too much because this is going to happen. Or we've had experiences, if I get too happy, then something happens, right? We carry thoughts about that. We need to let go of that because, again, God is the way and the path. We could look at God as dropping breadcrumbs, saying, follow me this way. And those breadcrumbs are the truths that we get to hear, the connections that we have with one another. So we're talking about happiness in this moment. Maybe we could look at the difficulties in our mind, in our life. Look at them as mm, something to find an answer for in God rather than looking at it as a difficulty. Maybe there are questions that we're asking and we want to find an answer to it. It's not a difficulty, it's just a question. Maybe it's a, a ringing of a bell in heaven inside that's waking me up and going, George, or a beloved one, or whoever, here I am, here's the way. It's an opportunity. We all have opportunities and we get to look at it any moment of the day and go, do I choose to come out of fear? Do I choose to come out of love? Do I choose to be separate from God? Do I choose to be one with God? Those are good questions to ask ourselves. So we want to regard all the things around us, our people that we're with, the situations that we're in, and know that we are always standing on divine ground because we are divine beings. 
So we want to know that the place that we're at and whoever we're with is a divine moment. That God is there speaking through us. Helping that relationship and that situation if we open up to it. Or anything that's going on in our life. Anything that is problems or difficulties. We need to change our thinking about it so we can remove them. Because what our mind does is it, lo it looks at what it's familiar with. And if we let the unconscious mind, it's going to always look at problems. It's going to look, if it has a certain belief and said, oh, I can't trust people, then we could have the most trustworthy people around us, but we're not going to trust them because we have a belief that says, that's who I am. So those are the things that we need to be aware of, that we need to let go. And then when we do, the solution is there. It was there all the time. It just got covered up by negative thought. And we need to know also that we cannot solve the problem we've created with the same mind that created it. Can we? No, that's where we got to get our connection to God, our oneness, and let go of everything else. So it's about opening our eyes up, seeing in a different way, seeing the truth of what God has. How to look at the star at night. We talk about Christmas, that's what I brought up here. So the Magi followed a star at Christmas time, and what did they find? The birth of Jesus which is rebirth inside of us. So every time we look up at a star, maybe we're creating rebirth inside of ourselves. We're looking at the star and the brightness and the light of who we are. And there's a light out there, but take your pick, look at one and just connect to it. And look at how far away that star is and yet you can say, but I am one with that star. I am as bright as that star. I am the light like that star. And there's no disconnection. As Jesus said, I am the way and the truth. I am the light. So how often do you all let your light shine? I'm going to talk more about that at Christmas because that's what the theme is. To let our light shine. Maybe that's the only thing that we have to do in this world, beloveds. Is let us shine our lights. Everywhere that we're at, a smile on our face and let the light shine within us. Knowing God is expressing through us. So wherever you're at work or you're at play or whatever you do, it's all the same. It's all that oneness with God and feeling joy inside of your life. And so there's a lot of things going on in our life that we could experience joy. So I want to share some with you. Before I say that, I want to let you know this. Because you are all worthy and divine, you have to know that wherever you're at, you're needed. Even in the streets, you are needed. Even in the back alleys, you are needed because God is in you. There is no place, beloveds, where you are not needed. Take that in and go, wow, I am needed in this world. Who I am gives some comfort and peace to others when I'm connected to my light. That's my goal. That's my purpose for being here. So let's look at the things that we experience joy in and see how you feel it. Laughing until your face hurts. Do you do that? Falling in love. Remember what that feels like. And we can keep doing that. Taking a hot shower. Oh, God, that brings up joy. Getting mail. Not bills, but mail. Maybe a letter from somebody that wrote you one that you could sit down and read if anybody ever does that anymore. Lying in bed, listening to the rain outside. Hot towels fresh out of the dryer. Put them to your face and go, ah, that feels good. How about giggling? Or maybe you open up a coat you had last winter and there's a $20 bill in there or more. How about that? Running through sprinklers. Feel the joy of having somebody tell you how beautiful or handsome you are. Not, you know, I say that to people and they go, me, not me. Instead of going, thank you, I am. <laughs> Take it in and acknowledge it. Playing with a new puppy. How's that going? Bonnie? She just got one, okay. Wrapping presents under the Christmas tree, eating cookies and having a favorite drink, or unwrapping them, I mean. Seeing smiles and hearing laughter from children in the park or from your friends. Watching the expression on someone's face when you give them a much desired presence. Present, or presence of yourself. How about waking up in the morning and watching the sunset and just having a, I don't drink coffee, but some people do or juice or something and just watch the sun come up and look at yourself and being one with that what a miracle thing for a sun to rise up and go down at night and I'm one with that 
Getting out of bed every morning and thanking God for another beautiful day. Amen. Do that daily. That brings you joy. So we want to look at how much we take things for granted. Look at every small thing in our life that we just go through it. We do this, we wake up, we go to work, we come home, we do this, we do this. Do we stop during the day and just say, thank you, God, for this? Thank you for my safety during the day. I know that you are here. I may not totally get it all the time because I get caught up in life, but I trust that you're guiding me. I'm listening to you. Help me speak my truth. There's one huge basket of love in this world. If we look at the whole world as a basket of love, and each and every one of you, all of us, are in that basket. We're love. We're connected to one another. We are splendid. Splendor of love. When you do this, then you begin to know what love is worth. You begin to know that you are worthy. I talked about that last week. It's not a fact or fact, but it's not something that needs to be proven. It's something that you need to feel. I am worthy just for who I am. Then you begin to look and feel in your heart and know that you have a heart, that you are one with this heart because that's what love is. And then you get to feel God. There was a flow that I was talking about. I hope you got it because it's about knowing love and then your worthiness and then your heart, how strong it is and trusting the heart of God. That's being joy. It's not about doing things. It's about being one with all that's going on in your life. And just being grateful for everything. And knowing that you're connected to your heart and to God inside of you. And love. And joy. And laughter is also joy. For those that are new, I share jokes here after service is over because it's great to laugh. And then when you learn your true identity, which is what we're talking about, how divine and worthy you are, then you have something to give. Instead of looking around trying to receive something, why not go out in the world and give of yourself? Give of the light that you are to one another. Give of the joy that you are, knowing that joy is love. Joy is in your hearts. So, beloveds, know that you are your own joy. Right now, take it in and claim it. I am my own joy. And know that you are loved and deeply loved. Namaste. Before we go to meditation,